west. Starring Flash LaRue. Daring robberies, wrestling, reckless gun duels, strange wars, wanton murder, and violence of every kind. But close on the spurred heels of the swaggering outlaws comes Flash LaRue, riding in again with another action-packed saga of the bygone West. Flash, in this story here, a stranger comes into town. The hero knows right away that he's from Texas. Even ask him what part of Texas. Don't well, you think that's stretching it a little bit? Maybe. When did the story take place? Well, back in the trail drive days, after the Civil War. Then it was possible. You see, people didn't move around the country as much then. They didn't have the fast transportation. A man from Texas could be recognized at a glance as soon as he got off his home range. Yeah, but how? By his speech, for one thing. Up until a few years ago, I could listen to a man and tell what part of the United States he came from by his accent. But now with radio and motion pictures and television, we have more or less set a standard speech pattern. Well, sir, I remember back in the early days when you could recognize a Texas man by his clothes or his talk or his horse gear. Yeah, he'd wear shotgun or batwing shafts as protection against the thorny brush. And the big hat he wore usually had a steeple crown instead of pinched in. That's right. Today, a man from Pendleton, Oregon, may be in San Antonio and see a hat he likes. He buys it, flies back and wears it in Oregon the next day. Or maybe a saddle might strike his fancy. But back in the olden days, you know a double-rigged rimfire saddle meant Texas. I've seen old-timers riding along and suddenly decide the cack was loose. They'd reach down and pull the old trunk strap ladder go a notch tighter. They could do this right on the lope, too. Say, Marshal, that reminds me. You left off that girl about your grandfather in Gold Valley with those two sidewinders high loping after that girl, June Thornton. Say, what happened? Well, Granddad and his partner weren't taking any chances. They were watching. And when Conway got too close, they moved in. Thanks, Buzzy. Let's head back to the ranch. Looks like Miss Thornton got here safely, all right. Yeah, it's a good thing we were riding herd on them galoots, but she might not have made it. We sure had that one figured out, didn't we, Lash? We sure did, Buzzy. Hey, I'm going over to the bunkhouse and water my throat.
Are you sure you carried out all my instructions? Completely. but I think Joe did. You're right. And he told Conway and his henchmen that you were riding back to the ranch. Well, then you think Joe had something to do with my uncle's murder? Oh, my. Thank you. 
Out of ammunition, Joe. I'm coming after you. Long talk. I'm sure glad that traitor Joe got what was coming to him. But what was on the stagecoach those outlaws wanted? I want to find out what Lass did with the man behind it all. I think he knows, too. Yes, I'm sure he did. But I'll have to tell you all about it next time. I've got to go back in the courthouse in a few minutes, find out how the trial's coming out. But I'll see you all real soon. of the West. Starring Flash LaRue. Daring robberies, wrestling, reckless gun duels, range wars, wanton murder, and violence of every kind. But close on the spurred heels of the swaggering outlaws comes Lash LaRue, riding in again with another action-packed saga of the bygone West and the story of a hot-tempered cowboy. Not only that, we're engaged to be married, with the wedding date only two months away, and now he's in trouble again. Let me ask you, Sally, did Higgins lock him up? Well, Constable Higgins was very nice about it. Jack's mother and I went down to intercede for him, and he let Jack out on bail. Well, I wouldn't worry about it too much, Sally. Jack is no worse than a lot of other young fellows that I know. And Mary will tame him down. You'll see. Yeah, he's not a bad sort. It's that temper of his. Since taking over his father's ranch, he's had a lot of responsibilities, and it's made him worse. Well, I know. Every time somebody steps on his toes, he thinks they're trying to jip him. I used to be the same way. If the words didn't come fast enough, why, I'd use my fist. That reminds me of that yarn that your granddad told you when he saved the bacon of that hot-headed kid. The Latimer County War? Yeah, that was about uh, water rights, wasn't it? Well, that's funny. Jack's fight's about water rights, too. Well, maybe you better tell her. Might be a moral in it. Might be at that. If it hadn't been for a particular hot-headed kid, Granddad would never have been able to arrest the Sundance kid and clean up the county in one day. In one day? That's right. Say, hey, don't you think you ought to tell the folks about it? I think it established some kind of a record. I'll admit it was lucky, but it also took a lot of nerve. Granddad was U.S. Marshal at the time, working with his partner, Fuzzy. They were on their way to look into a squabble involving water rights and cattle rustling. They had a tip that the Sundance Kid was operating there under the name of Taggart. Well, Fuzzy, here's where we spit up for a while. Lash, I, I don't see why we always ride together. Look, Fuzzy, you ride into town and size things up. 
get what information you can. You know, Lash, when Buffalo Bill and me used to ride together, we used to do the same thing. Now, I remember a time when we were riding through Dakota in the Badlands. Of course, we were buffalo hunting. We were on a pony, just like you and me is here now, when all of a sudden, old Bill pulled up and he started to sniff. Started to what? Started to sniff. Why, that man could sniff a buffalo if it was 10 miles away. Yeah, I know, I know, I, 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 I know. I, you, Look, Fuzzy, you ride on into town alone. Well, what are you going to do? I'll stay around here a couple of hours, then I'll ride into town. Don't worry, I'll find you. Well, all right. I don't think he was any more guilty of rustling than you are. Yeah? What makes you think he wasn't? Well, Lance Target said that Sam Webb caught him rustling. And everybody knows that Webb is working for Target. Oh, here they come now. Come on, boys. The drinks are on me. Hey, uh, what's all the celebration about? Oh, Lance Taggart and his mob just lent some poor fellow. Well, what'd he do? I don't think he did anything. But Taggart said he was caught brand running. I think he was a lawman. What makes you think so? Well, every time we send for a lawman, he gets dry gulched or hung. That sounds kind of serious to me. Can't you fellows do something about it? Well, I've done the only thing we can do now. I've sent for a young fellow by the name of Lashley Rue to help us bust this thing wide open. When do you think he'll get here? Well, he should be here sometime today. Any of you, uh, any of you fellas know this Lash LaRue? Well, no, only by reputation. But he'll make himself known when he does arrive. <laughs> you know, that reminds me of the time when I was riding with Buffalo Bill. Well, we were coming down a little town me, around the corner, the and when we come around the bend there, there's the funniest thing happened that I... Uh, 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 well, I said when he was coming around the bend, I... Kimlin, some of the ranchers are getting plenty of sore at what's been going on. What do you mean? While you boys was busy taking care of that lawman, I found out that Kimlin sent for Lash LaRue. Well, he's the marshal that helped clean out Tombstone. Yeah, Kimlin says he's going to arrive here today. Well, he'll find out he's bucking up against the wrong crowd this time. We'll take care of him the way we did the rest. What do you want me to do? Take a couple of the boys and see that he don't get to Red Rock. Ace, Jeff, come here. It so happened that the Sundance Kid's trigger man cut down his man all right, but he got the wrong one. When Granddad rode into town the next day, this hot-tempered kid I was telling you about was in the saloon showing his horns and rattles. I tell you, I came here to see Lance Taggart. I'm without a gun, so there's no reason for a fight. What's the matter, kid? You're getting yellow. Maybe you should have sent your sister in. I'd like talking to her. You leave Mary out of this. My business is with Taggart. Suit yourself, but like I said, I think your sister get a lot further than you. Have your say, Jackson. But when the Arizona investigator arrives, he's going to run you and Taggart out of this country. Why don't you go home? And next time you come back, make sure you're wearing a gun. Otherwise, send Mary in. I think I'm long overdue for an introduction. I'll make you wish you'd never said that. Hey, boys, Billy the kids are going to shoot a defenseless man. Somebody loan me a gun. Little boys who play with fire are liable to get burnt. Your sister's waiting for you outside. I think you better go. Thanks. Mister, I don't know who you are, but before I'm through with you, I'll make you wish that you had never interfered. What happened was that Granddad found the man that was murdered instead of himself and had brought in his papers. 
If the Sundance kid had mistaken him for the dead man, that was all right with the marshal. He knew that the Sundance kid would be after the hot-tempered cowboy. So, he laid his plans accordingly and headed out toward the young fellow's ranch with his pal. The hot-tempered cowboy had taken the law into his own hands. He blew up the dam the Sundance kid had built to keep the young rancher's cattle from getting water. Sundance and his curly wolves rode out to get the rancher. Here he comes, boys. Let him have it. He's only got one exit from Stone Canyon Springs, and we got that covered. Hold your fire, boys. I got an idea of how we can smoke him out. Danny, we're out of ammunition. I want to call it truce. As soon as I pop my head up, they'll let me have it. I'm telling the truth. All right. Tell your men to drop those six guns and come out with their hands in the air. Drop your gun, Danny. You're on arms. When we start down, Taggart, let him have it. You sidewinders. Granddad hauled them into town and locked them up on a series of charges ranging from robbery to attempted murder. And if it hadn't been for this hot-tempered kid, he would never have been able to make the pinch. I'd still rather have Jack solve his problems legally. You're absolutely right, Sally. You know, it's bad medicine these days for a young lad to try and solve his problems without help. What do you say we ride over and have a talk to Sally's young hot blood? Well, now, you know, I think that'd be right neighborly. Well, I surely do appreciate this, boy. Well, let's get Try along, Sally. So long, folks. I've got to run now. Drop in again real soon, will you? of the West. Starring Lash LaRue. Daring robberies, wrestling, reckless gun duels, range wars, wanton murder, and violence of every kind. But close on the spurred heels of the swaggering outlaws comes Flash LaRue, 
riding in again with another action-packed saga of the bygone west and the story of the wild bunch. Well, Hank and I found the strays way back up in Diablo Canyon. What a day. I haven't been out of the saddle since sunup. Well, sit down and rest yourself. I've been sitting too long anyway. Thanks, Mojave. Ah, sure feels good. What's new in the outside world? Oh, the same old thing. Murder, hold up, war talk. You know, the world hasn't changed very much. It's the same in your grandfather's day. Railroads, stagecoaches, and Indians. Well, railroads are pretty foolproof nowadays. Well, that's because it's a federal offense. Yeah, even in the old days, outlaws like Butch Cassidy were careful not to run up against federal charges. The Logan boys got into trouble when they held up a U.S. mail stage. They were part of Cassidy's wild bunch. Well, I never knew the old marshal had a brush with the Logans. Say, maybe we better tell that about him. Why, sure. It happened just after the Logans held up a mail stage about 20 miles outside of Dubois, Wyoming. The trick they used had gray hairs. The old fly swatter who was pushing the stage should have known better, but he didn't. The Logan boys and their pal got what they wanted. Stay where you are and put up your hands. Get back up on the seat and put on the mail pouch, driver. All right, get back into the coach and be quick about it. You was told to keep your hands up, mister. Now get in there. All right, get out of here. Get out of here! What the boss wants, all right. Come on, let's ride. That was a letter addressed to Jim Thornton, who was really Butch Cassidy, holding up at the time in Dubois. The letter was from Matt Warner telling Butch it was safe to come on down into Arizona. But why hold up the stage when the letter was coming in anyway? I don't know. Impatience, maybe, or maybe they just wanted to keep in practice. Anyway, Granddad and his pal were on the way to Fort Laramie when the would-be mail carriers arrived in Dubois. What's all the shooting about? It's Matt Conway and his pals. They're shooting up the saloon. So who's Matt Conway? Mister, if you don't know, you're better off. And you'd better hunt a hole to crawl in. Well, why don't the sheriff do something about it? The last one did. Now he's pushing up daisies in Boot Hill. Coming along, Fuzzy? Well, where you all going? Well, I'm going in and get a formal introduction to Matt Conway. Not me. I told you down the road a piece that my nose was there. You don't know want that me. Uh, Hey, Lash, wait for me.
Well, boys, here's to the... I think you've had enough, mister. Put down that drink. Hey, Lash, you're slipping. You used to be able to do that without spilling a drug. Now, which of you is Conway? I am. Who are you? That funny-looking storm up you've got with you. Why, I'll knock the buttons right off. Conway, the West is sick and tired of poor cats like you. Now get your pals together and get out of here. Come on, get. Granddad recognized the Logans, and during the fracas, he saw Kid Curry, Cassidy's lieutenant, ride out of town. Well, the marshal must have figured that Cassidy was still around. No, not after that fool play of the Logans. You see, Cassidy wasn't the kind of a curly wolf who went looking for trouble. Okay. So what happened? Well, the stage driver came in with his tale of woe, and Granddad recognized the Logan technique. Figured they pulled the job. What he hoped for was that they would try to bushwhack him as he rode out of town. To kind of even up the score. And did they? Well, Granddad and Fuzz started out about the middle of the day. Hey, wait a minute. What's the matter, Fuzzy? Your nose bothering you again? Oh, it tickles. You know that means trouble. You and your hunches. We better get a move on. It'll be dark in an hour. You know my nose. This ain't itching for nothing. Well, maybe you're right. We'll split up. You ride the ridge and I'll stay on the pass. Meet you on the other side. and I'll get him on the run. I ought to feel the rest of you full of lead. Now, don't make any false moves because my trigger finger is getting itchy in my nose. Thanks, Fuzzy. Conway, pull off your gun belt. You heard what the man said. Now, tough guy, let's see how you can do in a fair fight.
Dad and Fuzz herded the Swampers back to town. The stage driver put the finger on them and they spent a year in the state penitentiary. And it just goes to show they couldn't get away with it even in them days. That's right, Mojave. <clears throat> and now, if you don't mind, I think I'll hit the sack. It's been a long, hard day. Good night, folks. Good night, Mojave. Good night, son. Have a good rest. And that goes for you folks, too. Good night. On the spurred heels of the swaggering outlaws comes Lash LaRue, riding in again with another action-packed saga of the bygone West and the story of Tibercio Vasquez. Take 500 head out to the Northwest Range. I'll be along a little later and give the boys a hand. Okay, boss. Hiya, buckaroos! Hey, don't call me buckaroo. I'm from Wyoming. What do you mean you're not a buckaroo? You're a cowboy, aren't you? You're darn tootin' I am. And a good one, too. You see, some of the old-timers don't like to be called buckaroos. They're a different kind of cowboys. Now, the Texas puncher rides a small horse, throws a short loop, and wears leather shafts. The California cowboys rode big horses with Spanish-style rigs and threw long loops. Their lariats were sometimes 60 or 70 feet long. These California waddies went in for fancy check pants and outfits that affected the Spanish style. They liked to call themselves buckaroos, from the Spanish word vaquero, which means cowboy. Now, sometimes the letter V is pronounced B in Spanish, buckero. So another step in the same direction will give you buckaroo. You mean when I called Hank that, it was like calling him fancy pants? That's right. And out in Wyoming, where he comes from, they're just plain, hard-working punchers. Those buckaroos were pretty good, weren't they? Sure thing. On their own ground, they were just as good as the Montana or Texas cowboy on theirs. Say, didn't you say something about the Spanish cowboys? What'd you call them? Vaqueros. Did you ever know any of them? Well, no, they were a little ahead of my time. But my granddad, Lash, he would run into them once in a while. Did I ever tell you about the bandit called Vasquez? Did your grandfather ever capture him? Well, yes and no. Maybe I better tell you the whole story. You see, Vasquez was captured about two years before Granddad came to Southern California, out in what is now known as the Hollywood Hills. He was taken into Los Angeles, tried, and hanged. If he was hanged, how'd your grandpa... Not so fast. You're crowding me. Maybe you don't know it. And maybe you folks out there don't know it, but old-time bandits have a way of always coming back. There are some people who still believe that Billy the Kid, Sam Bass, Tom Horn are all alive and have turned out to be prosperous and respected citizens. But to get back to the story, my granddad Lash was coming down through the San Gabriel Mountains to take over in Southern California as U.S. Marshal when he was dry gulched by two unknown gentlemen. That bird sure got out of sight in a hurry. He was right on this trail. Let's look up ahead. Oh, 
Granddad brought his prisoner into town, turned him over to the local sheriff. Then he learned that the man was a member of the Vasquez gang. Now, he was surprised because he thought Vasquez had been captured. But the sheriff was of the opinion that Vasquez had never been captured. He told him of an incident that happened a few days before. Reach La Sombra. You're through playing your game. For a long time, I've been suspicious as to just who you are. But now I intend to find out. All right. Get that mask off. And make it pronto. Quit stalling, La Sombra. Get that mask off quick or I'll take it off for you. No! Sorry, senor, but nobody should know too much about La Sombra. Hasta la vista, amigo. But the man in the story was called La Sombra, not Vesquez. That's the handle he was known by in those parts. La Sombra. The shadow. And just as hard to shoot as a shadow, too. Anyway, Granddad snooped around town and found that Vasquez used to hang around an old Indian stockade. So he went out there to take a look. That's when he took a look at Vasquez for the first time. Did he get him? Not that time. That vaquero knew those hills like a coyote. Seemed like he disappeared right into thin air. Then my granddad found out that an eastern syndicate was trying to buy up the old Indian stockade, and he thought it might be an angle. So he enlisted the aid of a ranch woman and her daughter, who had been approached by a representative of the syndicate. Thank you, Mrs. Burley. I was signed all legal-like. All I have to do is put my name down here, and I'll be the legal owner instead of the syndicate. Why don't you do that, Senor Priest? Then perhaps I'll have a better reason for killing you. Now, wait a minute, Chief. You got me all wrong. I wasn't trying to double-cross you. I was just kidding. Someday you will kid just once too often. And now, Mrs. Butterly, if you will give me the pen, I will put my name down here. So you're the Eastern Syndicate? And Joe Christ has been working for you all along. No. Changed his mind about selling the Indian stockade. All right. Here we are, all of you. Now, you hand over that bill of sale, Sombra. So, I was right about you. Yes. You and that phony Mexican outfit of yours. I've known who you were all the time. Now I'm going to let everybody else know. Now, take off that mask. I'm gonna see your face, and then I'm gonna kill you. <gasps> Granddad was putting the pieces together. He began to realize that this bandit was trying to regain land once owned by the Spaniards by operating under the guise of a syndicate. When one of his men tried to ride him out, he knifed him down. And that brings us to Granddad's toothache and the final part of our story. Toothache? That's right, they not only had teeth in those days, but they also had dentists. You'll see. Yeah, these will ease the pain. What is your theory about La Sombra? I think he's a very well-educated man. Someone well thought of in the community. Someone like yourself, Doc. <laughs> well, come on, let's have a look at that tooth. Well, to tell you the truth, I... I don't have a toothache. I didn't think you did. Say, Doc, what did you give me? I, I feel a little sleepy. You're very clever, Marshal, but not clever enough. Then, then you are... The Sambler? Yes, but you'll never live to tell anybody about it. I advise you not to move, Marshal. You see, those pills are very strong. If you remain quiet, you'll live just a little longer. Say, uh, tell me, how did you figure out I was La Sombra? That day Fuzzy came in. I saw a bottle of spirit gum on your shelf. Spirit gum is used by play actors who want to glue on fake mustaches or goatees. Very little to work on, Marshal. Then when Mrs. Burley told me about your father being Apache Jack, 
I put two and two together. When your father massacred all those people in Fort Wilson, it was part of a plan. And I am determined to carry out that plan. You're mad, stark raving mad. Yes, I am. I've always been mad at what Brad Burley and the other ranchers did to my father. And now I'll break them, one by one. Without the passes and open road, they'll all be ruined. Hasta la vista, Marshal. Happy dreams. Damascus at all, but had been using the disguise to gain control of the land and ranches in that vicinity. The story stands out, however, as a good example of how some bandits, like old soldiers, never die. Oh, one thing more. My granddad always used to say, there ain't a wrong man in the world that can stand up against a right man who knows he's right and keeps it coming. Remember that, will you? I'll be seeing you. Swaggering outlaws comes Flash LaRue, riding in again with another action-packed saga of the bygone West and the story of the Yantis Gang. Driving down across Slewfoot Canyon, then Arroyo Segunda. If you have any trouble, why, let me know. Well, that old side biting bomber can't call me a liar and get away with it. Give me one of those shotguns. I'm aiming to kill a critter, and I don't mean I ain't gonna miss. Well, now, take it easy, old-timer. Well, if you won't get it, I'll get it myself. Now, wait a minute, Cliff. What's eating you? No guns go out of here unless we know the purpose. Well, I'm gonna kill myself a head cook. That's the purpose. Why kill him? He's the best cook in the county. Not on flapjack, he ain't. Oh, boy, I hate those lumps in my flapjacks. Well, that's no reason to kill a man. Maybe not. But when he handed me that cleaver and told me I couldn't beat a b b b b b a bit of batter, that was the final straw. Now, wait a minute. We can settle this peacefully. No. Well, while you're holding him and trying to dream up an idea, I think I'd better get started on the yarn for tonight. Don't want to keep you folks out there waiting. Taking the law into your own hands, like Cliff here, reminds me of the time that my granddad and his partner Fuzzy were sent over to Bisbee. 
Seems that Yantis and his lads had moved in and set up their own government. Fuzzy got himself a job as a stage driver to cover up his real activity, and a week later, the marshal himself rode into town. Well, boys. What happened, Fuzzy? Uh, a bunch of coyotes tried to hold up the stage again. Did you recognize any of them? No, they turned chicken and hot-tailed it. I guess the temperature got a little too hot for him. Yes, thanks to this young man. If he hadn't turned up when he did, I'm afraid to think what might have happened. The guard's inside in pretty bad shape. Better get him to a doctor. The marshal's sidekick got popular after that, and they made him sheriff. Meanwhile, some of Yanis's high rollers couldn't figure out why a pistol artist like Granddad wanted to play lone wolf. They tried various ways of riling him into a gunfight. <laughs> Matt, you tell the funniest stories. Here he comes now. Don't forget what I told you to do. Don't worry, baby. I can handle fellas like him. All right, go in your act. you watch where you're going? I'm sorry, ma'am. I didn't mean to bump into you. You deliberately walked right into me. What's the idea, mister? Are you trying to get fresh with this young lady? Now, just a minute. There seems to be some mistake. Apologize to her, or I'll wipe the street up with you. You're not going to wipe the street up with nobody. Everybody, Jake here just rode in from Rimrock. Says he thinks he saw Clem Yandis and his cutthroats uh, camped about ten miles out. Now I'm deputizing every able-bodied man that can tote a six-gun. What makes you think it's Clem Yandis? I used to see him in Santa Fe years ago, when he was part of the old Billy the Kid gang. If this gent is right, and it is the Yandis gang, you can bet he's not in this territory for his health. Say, young fella, you seem to know a lot about Yandis. What's your name? My name's Garrett. Garrett? Well, you must be the son of... No relation. When you get through deputizing, Sheriff, you can get one of your new deputies to help take this gent to jail. All right, you galoots. Gather around and get your badges. And your first official duty will be to take that sleeping beauty over there to the jailhouse so he can continue his nap. Fuzzy fell asleep on the saloon porch one afternoon and woke up to hear a couple of Yanis men talking about holding up a freighter that was carrying a gold shipment. Acting on this tip, he and Granddad rode out behind the freighter. Take a look at her, boys. A fortune on wheels, and it's all ours. All we've got to do is ride in and take it. Yeah, and only four guards and that dumb sheriff. I'm not so sure, Yadis. That whole setup looks fishy to me. What's the matter? You're not turning yellow, are you, Si? Size right, Yantis. I've tangled with that fellow in black before. He's plenty smart. Hey, look. They're stopping before going through the pass. Guy, fire two shots from that rifle. Hey, have you gone crazy? Does that guard fire as Yantis and his gang will know right where we are. Do as I say before it's too late. Hey, that hombre's making it plenty easy for us. He must want us to see him. I still say there's something wrong. It isn't natural for the railroad company to ship all that money with only four guards. These hills are probably crawling with a hundred deputies. Yeah, you're probably right. Well, what do you want to do about it, Si? Let them get the money into town. Then we'll pay Jim Thorne's bank another little visit. And this time, there'll be no slip-ups. Come on, let's get out of here. Granddad figured they would try for the bank, took precautions, and the robbers were driven off. Several days later, he and his partner took off quietly on a fishing expedition into the hills. 
They didn't have long to wait before they made a strike. Let's go the rest way on foot. Yannis ought to be back by now. I wonder what he's up to. Whatever it is, you can bet it'll be all right. Clem Yandis is plenty smart. When are we going to crack that bank? I'm anxious to get on the move again. Shouldn't be too long now. Maybe even tonight, unless Clem has other ideas. Wonder what that was. Oh, probably a straight cat. Now you've done it. Let's get out of here. Well, why can't we go on that? We wouldn't have a chance here. Come on. I'm still not so sure. You'd better go out there and have a look around. I think one of those fellows spotted us by the... Uh, do you think so? Yeah. Guard this trail. Hey, don't you think we ought to stay together? Guard this trail. We sure fixed him. Yeah, but we better get out of here before his playmates miss him. I've got a hunch things are going to happen fast from now on. When they got that Johnny Reb back to town, he turned out to be Driftwood Jim McLeod, first lieutenant of Yanis' gang. He began to sing, and other war eagles decided to clear town while there was still sound of limb and wind. And now, if you'll excuse me, folks, well, Mojave, have you got any ideas? I sure have. Let the three of us go to the cook shack. Clear from the cook, whip up some flapjacks. You and I'll be the judge. That suits me. <laughs> you hit the bell that time, Mojave. I'm just hungry enough to be in the mood for that kind of a mortal combat. All right, come on, Cliff. Let's get going. 
So long, folks. Duty calls. Outlaws comes Flash LaRue, riding in again with another action-packed saga of the bygone West. How'd you make out, Strad? Fine, Lash. That Mr. Benson, the fleet superintendent, was very nice. Says you listed the Southwest Packers drivers. Do you think a Southwest truck was responsible for the disappearance of those steers? Well, it's a possibility we can't afford to overlook. What's that? Well, we have truck weighing stations all over the state, you know. I got a report from all of them in the morning. You find out anything important? I don't know. Those steers disappeared on a Friday night, and there's only one weighing station that has a report on a Southwest truck the next day, Saturday. Those truck drivers don't care whether they work or not. They're an independent bunch. What weighing station was that? Highway 50, north of here. That runs past the Acoma Mine. Is, is that a connection? Maybe. I imagine you folks are impatient to hear more of the story about Granddad. Now, I like to juggle things around in my mind, so while I do that, maybe we can catch up on our story and see what Granddad and his twin brother are up to this time. <laughs> I'm going after Evans and his daughter. I'll be back. Alakazam. Alakazam. Alakazim. Alakazoom. Till he pushed. Poof. Well, what do you know? You don't say. What's that? Well, I'll be doggone. <laughs> Boy, if Lash was here, he wouldn't even believe it. <laughs> you know, I was just reading some more stuff here about hypnotism. How'd you get back so soon? I thought you went out to get Frank Evans and his... Uh... I didn't leave, old-timer. I just pretended I did. You didn't leave? Well, why'd you have me? He says, when'd you start smoking? I don't think that's any of your business. Who are you? Uh, who am I? You know that man well who I am. What are you doing in them clothes? You know, Lash, you look just like the frontier as you... You look just like... You... There you well, What's your name? I'm known as a phantom. The Frontier Phantom. You're jumping Geronimo. Now, first off, you're going to tell me what you did with my men. Then you and I are going for a nice, long ride. The folks that used to live here were friends of mine named Ram. Sam Ram was an Indian trader until the outlaws took over the territory and they were forced to leave. 
You've been more than kind to help us as much as you have. Mr. Evans, is there anything you can tell me that might help our case? Yes. Jim McCord is the ruler of Robber's Roost, and he rules it with an iron hand. Practically every bad man with a price on his head goes in there at some time or another. McCord charges them plenty for protection, because he knows the law can't touch them there. I understand he does quite a business in counterfeit money. Yes, that's right. You know, Marshal, I can't get over it how much you look like the Frontier Phantom. Tell me, how does the Frontier Phantom fit into this? He's paid plenty to stick around as a bodyguard. There isn't one of those henchmen that wouldn't kill McCord for two cents. Mr. Evans, you and your daughter stay here. There should be plenty of provisions for the two of you. I'm going after Fuzzy. We'll be back later on today. Your partner, Fuzzy, will be at Robber's Roost. Take my advice and forget him. Get out of this territory. I'd hate to see you end up with a bullet in your back. The Frontier Phantom. For a little walk. Now don't reach for a gun, Lash. I'd hate to have to kill my own brother. I've been hearing about your reputation as a marshal. I figured it was you who waylaid the boys when one of them said something about a whip. Still handy with it, huh? You haven't done so bad. Since one of our men shot Bill to the kid, you're the most wanted outlaw in the country. What happened to you? Last time I saw you, you were a bank teller in Wyoming. What are you doing in this territory anyway? Looking for you and Jim McCord? You see, I've been assigned to this case. Take my advice, kid. Get out while you're still healthy. McCord's playing for keeps. So is Uncle Sam. The law is moving west. It means to put an end to men like Jim McCord. You're talking through your hat, Lash. McCord's too smart for the law. Sooner or later, they all get it. Billy the Kid, Sam Bass, the Daltons, and one of these days, the Frontier Phantom. What do you say? Give yourself up and get off with a life sentence. Then you can live like a respectable citizen. It's not in the cards, Lash. Imagine me living to be a respected old man. That's the way Dad would have wanted it. Yeah, and what did it get him? He wound up with a bullet in his back for something he didn't do. Seems like only yesterday we were kids back in Wyoming. Dad was teaching you how to handle a six-gun, remember? Stop preaching! I'm in too deep. McCord wouldn't let me quit anyway. I'm sorry you feel that way about it because you leave me no other way out. I'm placing you under arrest. Don't be a fool, Lash. There ain't a man in the country that can outdraw me. Don't say I didn't warn you. Is that a threat? Just brotherly advice. Well, I guess we'll have to find out. All right, Lash, you win. Here's my hand to prove it. Inside with Frontier. McCoy, 
Guard's going to be plenty sore at me for not bringing you back. Stick close to the ranch. You'll be safe here. My brother's inside. When he comes to, tell him I'll be seeing him. Not to try to follow me. part of that frontier phantom, but he's sure interesting. I've always enjoyed the stories, Marshal, but it's got me wondering about that steer deal. Have you got a theory? I sure have, Flapjack. You know, I got to wondering where Southwest was keeping their trucks while their new garage was being built, so I called and asked them. Mr. Benson said that the drivers who had parking space were allowed to take them home overnight. That's why I wanted this list of drivers. We'll check it now. Well, the wait station checked the truck number license as being CV45189. The driver is listed as Larry Coons, and Southwestern has him down as a local run. Well, what in blazes is he doing on Highway 50? Yeah. Making a run when the trucks were idle. I don't know, gentlemen, but I imagine that Larry Coons knows something about our missing cattle. I hate to leave you folks now, but our time is about run out. I hope you'll be with us next time because I'd like to tell you more about Granddad. <laughs> of the swaggering outlaws comes Flash LaRue, riding in again with another action-packed saga of the bygone West. quite a doodle of myself, Marshal. When you get through over there, I'd like to show you a favorite of mine. I guess it does look like doodling, Bob Jack, but I was trying to get a picture of the Anchor A pasture. Maybe I can help you, Marshal. Howdy, Jackman. Sit down. Hi, deputy. Are you still here, Flap Jack? <laughs> yes, I kind of like it here. Besides, I wouldn't think of leaving here until me and the marshal solved that mystery of your missing steers. That's mighty nice of you, Flapjack. I know you're uh, much too worried to be here on a social call, Mr. Jackman, so what's on your mind? After you called me and asked me to run down at a row of bed, I did so and I found something. Some spots where the banks had been caved in? Sure was, Marshal. And after we shoveled that cave in dirt, we found plenty of blood signs. I thought you would. And something else, too. Two miles up that road, we found a set of tracks where a car had entered the highway, and it wasn't a rancher's car, either. It was a truck. I sure wish you'd tell me how things fit in here. I'll be glad to, Jackman. But first, I'd like to tell my friends out there, and I hope you'll enjoy it, too, a little more of the story about my grandfather and my great-uncle. They were on different sides.
about 200. All I got's 4 1. Go win? Sorry, old timer, I got your beat. You got four twos. Is McCord. McCord? Oh, he's that only looking cussed. Hey, what am I telling you for? You know him better than I do, unless you uh, ain't the frontier phantom. You're right. We had a little argument and I won. So I borrowed his clothes. I don't like it, Fuzzy. I don't either. Those fellas are a little suspicious. Why well, they're up to something. I'm walking over to McCord now. He's that one with the coat on. going over there to see him. Keep going about your work. I'll see you later on. Where's Evans and the girl? I had no way of getting them back. They were afoot. Well, why didn't you take the boys? The boys weren't much good after tangling with our marshal. Besides, I wanted them to bring back the buckboard. You know, it wouldn't be too good if the law got a hold of all that counterfeit money. Well, I'm glad to hear somebody around here uses their head. That was smart thinking. Hey, it seems I'm out of cigars again. Let me have one of yours, Frontier. Uh, sorry. I'm fresh out. Well, never mind. You better get some shut-eye and then go after Evans and the girl. I don't want nothing to happen to her. What did I tell you, boss? That's Frontier. He's acting mighty peculiar. I never knew him to be without a cigar. Well, if what you say is right about that marshal looking like Frontier, he'll bear watching. We can't afford to let anything go wrong now. What do you want us to do? Keep an eye on him. When he goes after the girl, trail him. If he acts suspicious, finish him off. I'm worried about your brother, Frontier. If Jim McCord ever finds out that he's not you, but a U.S. Marshal, anything might happen. Well, it's his funeral, not mine. You hold me prisoner here ain't helping matters none. How about it, Evans? Turn me loose. Maybe I still got time to help him. I'd like to believe you, Frontier. But I'm afraid the only kind of help you'd give your brother is with a Winchester. I'm not so sure you're right, Dad. 
If he's half the man I think he is, he won't stand by and see his brother shot down in cold blood. Don't forget, Jane, his guns are hired to McCord. Whatever he did before, he might have had a reason for doing. I can't help but feel he'd help his brother. interesting story. Maybe I've been missing out on something, but I need a special invitation to listen to more. Well, you sure have it, Mr. Jackman. I want to ask you a question now. Why does a respectable ranch like the Anchor A have a fellow like Runt Mitchell in its employ? Oh, I was aiming to tell you. I never believe in holding a man's past again, but Mitchell, he kind of spoiled my faith, and he's no longer with us. He quit just. He did? Yeah. Why? Oh, nothing in particular. Said he's going to work for his brother up at Tacoma Mine. Oh, it looks like Runt Mitchell is another man we want. So long for now, folks. I'll see you next time. <laughs> Flash LaRue, riding in again with another action-packed saga of the bygone West. Where's the prisoner, Stratton? Over at the Fingerprint Bureau, getting the works. Picture taken and everything. Yeah, now that we got his lawyers out of the way, we can make up for lost time. Make some progress. They didn't do any of that stuff for me when I came here. I got cheated. What charge were you booked on, Flapjack? Charge? No charge. 
It so happened that the former marshal was my brother-in-law. And when my priest burned so down... that's why I, I couldn't find a file on you. They told me I inherited you with the office and that I couldn't get rid of it. Oh, pardon me, I... I didn't mean to be rude. Just having a little conference with uh, our star boarder. Say, Les, don't you think it's about time for that other story? Remember, you finished the one about the Gold Valley Outlaws, so you must have a new one for us now. What is it? I picked one I think you'll like. In it, my grandfather uses a little case of mistaken identity. The story starts when he was called into the marshal's office, Cottonwood, and there he received a report from his superior. <laughs> I don't need to tell you what the situation is, Lash. There's bank robberies, stage holdups, everything in the catalog. Now, we know this gang works out of Rhyolite, and I'm going to give you the job of running them down. I couldn't ask for anything better. Good. I thought you'd say that. You've uh, never been to Rhyolite, have you? No, I haven't. Well, uh, you know who this is? I don't believe I do. That's Deuce Rago. Now, we have every reason to believe that he is the brains behind this gang of desperados. Deuce Rago? Mm hmm I've heard he's the biggest man in Violite. That's right, he is. He owns the Union Saloon there, for one thing. He poses as a liberal, public-minded citizen. He's the one who has never suffered any losses or made any complaints. But he's about the only man in Violite who hasn't. I see. Now, I want you to get in with Rago. Win his confidence. Catch him red-handed if you can. Sounds like an interesting assignment. When do I start? I'll come to that in a moment. Now, there's a ranch about uh, 10 miles this side of Rylite. It's owned by the widow of Marshall Owens. He was shot a year ago. She can be trusted, and we'll use her as our contact. Yes, sir. I want you to be ready to leave when the stage comes in from Sierra Junction. It's going on through to Rylite today, and it's carrying a $20,000 payroll for the Silver Queen mine. I want you to trail it and be sure that it gets through. You can depend on me. I thought I could. Pick these two up snooping around the express office. There's the Dawson. Got a police record a mile long. Now, we've got enough bad men in this part of the country already. What made you leave Texas? And what are you doing here? We ain't doing nothing. We're on a vacation. We've never been this far west before. What did you pick us up for? Didn't you all have something to do with a bank robbery in Laredo, Texas? We don't know nothing about no bank robbery. I tell you, we're on vacation. Yeah? Well, we'll hold you two until we find out. Lock them up, Fuzzy. Come on. All right, all right. Have you got to push us around? I got constitutional rights. <laughs> Your constitution gives me indigestion. Now get in there. That goes for you two. So the Dawsons have never been this far west before. Well, that's what they said. Then they wouldn't be known in Rhyolite. But their reputations must be. Maybe a man with a reputation would have an easier chance to get in with Rago. Say, so what are you driving at? Give me this belt and team me up with Fuzzy and the Dawsons will take over Rhyolite. Now, wait a minute. You're not thinking Why not? Now, here's my plan.
right, all of you, with your hands up and step lively. All right, driver, slow down that express box. Blow the lock off. Stop those guns. Yes, ma'am. We said drop your guns and easy like before we drop you. This clip around your neck. You can't get away with it. That's fast to worry about. Cut out the gab and start walking. I think we're in the wrong end of this business. Don't let all this money give you any ideas, Fuzzy. <laughs> you know, that was a mighty pretty girl on that stagecoach. Of course, you wouldn't know. Come on, let's get out of here. took the money. I don't know, Sheriff. He had his face covered up like the rest of them. What's the trouble, Sheriff? The stage was held up, and they got away with the Silver Queen payroll. Another holder. I don't know what this country's coming to, Brent. That's the second time those bandits got away with money. That deuce radio has all the earmarks of a slippery customer. I wouldn't want to be in your grandfather's boots for me. Well, I don't think Granddad was worried about it. But why did he and his partner horn in on that stage hold up? It was crooked. Outside the law. Yes, but let's see what Deuce Rago thought about it. Hello. Yes, this is Lester. Oh, hello, Tom. All fingerprinted and mugged and everything, huh? I'll tell you, the federal prosecutor wants to ask him some questions. Uh, I'll call them right away and they'll send over for him. All right, fine. Thanks a lot. I'm sorry to break in like this, folks, but I've got to make an important phone call. And we'll take up the story about Granddad the next time we're together. And that'll be real soon. I'll be looking for it. Hello, Tom. Hello, Lester. 